Hello, and welcome to this edition of Credit Matters TV. My name is Taryn Wade, and I'm an Associate Director in the European Corporate Research Team. Today, I'm speaking with Isabella Listowska and Ali Ruhianen, uh, Senior Analysts in our Transportation Team. Welcome. Welcome. We've seen some difficult market conditions uh, in the transportation sector. We've had 17 rating actions of, the, of our 19 rated companies, and 11 of those have been negative. Uh, the shipping industry has been particularly affected. Isabella, could you start us off by talking about why that is? Well, uh, Tehran, shipping industry is facing um, tough operating conditions uh, because of uh, oversupply of ships that is meeting a rather tepid uh, trade demand. And so we, uh, the ratings on shipping companies have come increasingly under pressure. Over the six, seven months, we had six uh, negative rating actions uh, in across our shipping portfolios um, comprising six companies. And the key drivers uh, behind those uh, negative rating actions were number one, uh, deteriorating credit profiles of counterparties. Number two, uh, debt funded investments in new vessels beyond the existing already aggressive new building programs, which will evidently weigh on credit measures, and number three, eroding liquidity. Okay, so that, that's what, what has happened. What about our outlook going forward for these companies? Well, the outlook for, uh, if we, talk, we want to capture the outlook for, uh, for the shipping industry, we have to distinguish between three main sectors, uh, dry bulk, tanker, and containers. Let me start with dry bulk. Uh, this uh, sector is facing uh, the heaviest oversupply of vessels. Mm -hmm. and, uh, what, so and what is dry bulk? Dry bulk is carrying uh, uh, things like grain, iron ore, um, or coal. Okay. Very loosely, not, uh, not packet, packed uh, uh, objects. Okay. So, uh, so, so this industry is the hardest hit okay. and is experiencing yet another year of steep capacity expansion and, uh, and this will exceed the, 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 the tonnage demand by more than two times this year and this is why we forecast that charter rates for the dry bulk sector will continue at their historical lows for the next couple of quarters and we foresee a rebound in rates toward the end of 2013 at, at earliest. Um, for the tanker sector, we see a bit moderate, uh, a more moderate supply surplus, I would say, which will still keep utilization rates um, uh, under strain. We think that uh, the demand supply balance is going to recuperate faster for the tankers than for dry bulk, simply because the, the rate of delivery of new vessels will be lower. At the same time, we, we see that demand for tankers will rise owing to changes in trading patterns. For example, relocation of refineries from US and Europe to Middle East and Asia. There are, however, risks to our base case operating scenarios, uh, such as increased risk of recession in Europe, and also uh, geopolitical issues, such as um, uh, things surrounding the increasing tensions between the West and Iran, which may disrupt, uh, disrupt oil, uh, oil trade patterns. Uh, and this is why it is very difficult at the time to pinpoint when the rate will enter a sustained recovery, which we think is not going to happen this year, but rather from early 2013. And last but not least, the, the container sector, which has uh, come through a period of very low freight rates, below, below operating break-even. Uh, this has prompted industry leaders uh, to apply a more uh, aggressive uh, pricing strategy with unprecedented hikes in rates from March of 2013, which is coming along with slight in bunker fuel costs. This is the cost, the, the bunker fuel is the fuel on which the ships are, ru are run, which is all very good news for, uh, for container um, operators. Uh, and actually we think that this industry sector is going to return to profitability this year after huge losses it experienced in, uh, in 2011. Okay, so very mixed depending on what yes. part of the shipping industry. Okay. Um, turning to airlines, um, Ali, could you talk a bit about how our uh, rated portfolio has actually fared better than the industry recently? Why is that? Well, I think the, the airlines we rate, mainly Lufthansa and British Airways, um, have strong market positions in, in their hub 
airports uh, with limited low-cost uh, competition. And that has really allowed them a uh, flexibility in pricing. Um, also, the premium travel uh, has been holding up quite well despite the economic weakness, uh, which is a key profitability measure for the, um, the network carriers. Okay. So, um, so what about going forward, though? What are what is our forecast for operating profit for for companies in the sector? Yeah, we feel that the, the airline sector, similar to shipping, will be under pressure 2013, 2012, and 2013, mainly driven by you know sluggish overall uh, price ticket price increases, uh, which are on the other hand completely eaten away by significant cost increases. We see jet fuel trading at very high levels. Um, the, the network carriers have been benefiting that from uh, from the hedging arrangement in 2011 and, 2012 and early 2012. But as we go onwards, those uh, legacy hedging transactions are actually going to be uh, dropping off and replaced by this more expensive contract. Which and, and as oil and jet fuel are the, the kind of key operating costs of airlines, that's going to be pushing pressure. Um, the airlines are taking some action. Uh, they can't do much on the on the f fuel side uh, to counter that. Um, but they are trying efficiency gains from labor, but we still believe that uh, operating profits could be down by as much as 20% in, in some carriers. Okay. Uh, let's talk about funding uh, for these companies. O obviously, in both of these sectors, very um, asset heavy. Um, they need to rejuvenate their fleets quite often with banks, um, the relationship with banks. I mean, how is their access to capital? Well, we observe that uh, bank funding for shipping assets is uh, becoming increasingly scarce, expensive, and of shorter tenor. I in the shipping sector, we actually think that in particular, the, the, the funding for second-hand vessels uh, may experience a shortfall given the very depressed values of older ships. In general, we can say that uh, shipping banks will, uh, will likely continue reducing the exposure to the shipping uh, industry. In June, for example, Societe Generale has uh, sold the vast majority of its portfolio, shipping portfolio to Citigroup, and Commerzbank has taken even a more radical decision to, end to, to exit completely uh, ship funding. And this has obviously raised concerns uh, from uh, industry experts that other banks may follow. What's more, the alternative uh, funding sources, such as uh, equity markets or bond markets, appear to be very limited at this stage. At the same time, we think that uh, as banks are being increasingly selective as it comes to, 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 to funding, uh, operators, shipping operators uh, with good track records with, uh, with uh, solid uh, charter profiles with balance order books will be able to obtain funding for new vessels or refinance. Okay. And, and what about transportation? Uh, in, in terms of the airlines, uh, we see very similar trends. The, the, the kind of most common way of financing um, aircraft is uh, through either finance leases uh, or operating leases. Um, and especially the finance lease side has seen dramatic reduction in, in volumes. Uh, we, we have seen some European banks withdrawing completely, um, although there is still a market in Asia, so um, some of the rate carriers have been able to access the, the Asian uh, kind of finance lease markets. We, we have also noted that there has been a, a diverse, div kind of divergent uh, between some of the network carriers. Uh, Lufthansa was able to issue a, a bond um, in the U.S. earlier this year, uh, although it, it's a kind of semi-convertible bond. And BA announced today uh, it's um, uh, plan to issue a secured bond, secured on the on Heathrow landing slots. Um, so we're seeing a little bit of that, but at the same time we are clearly seeing that the weaker airlines are finding it much more difficult. And we uh, revised the outlook on SAS, for example, the negative earlier this year, based on liquidity concerns and kind of based on our view that the refinancing of their maturities next year will actually be quite challenging. Okay. Well, thank you both for joining us. It's been very interesting. This concludes this edition of Credit Matters TV. Thanks for joining us.